my dad and I were heading over to feed uh, some of the alligators. There's my dad right there. We're actually gonna be heading over to a friend's property. Um, he's a local alligator trapper. He's the guy that we purchased some of the alligators from here up in Tallahassee. Also, he's one of the local um, processors. He cleans uh, deer, pigs, and he also donates a ton of meat to us uh, to feed to our alligators. So we're going over there, we're gonna go through the scraps, pick out what we want, and we're gonna go over today and actually feed some of the alligators, uh, mid-size to the larger alligators. Uh, I did have somebody request that we uh, film with GoPros, like a head GoPro or a chest GoPro for a POV of that angle. Uh, we're gonna try to do that today. Um, not sure if it's gonna work out well. I've never done that before. So we're gonna see if we can uh, make that happen. Uh, right now with all this COVID-19 thing going on, this coronavirus um, spreading around, we're very limited on going to places. So we're trying to do what we can to make some of these videos so we're able to have something to post on Thursdays. So we're working on that. Uh, everybody stay safe with this and I hope you enjoy uh, the feeding of these alligators. So just arrived uh, at our buddy Broderick's place. Um, don't know if he's here. Uh, actually looks like he might be out on a gator call or something. His work truck's gone. But uh, this is, he actually allows us to keep our big uh, 50 foot enclosed trailer here. So he helps out a lot with us. And like I said, also we do get alligators from him, which is uh, a big uh, help. Uh, with the rescue part and then also with all this meat that he donates is absolutely amazing. Uh, it saves us a lot of money because these animals eat a lot of food. But we're gonna load all this up and we're gonna head over to the property and uh, start this feeding. We're gonna go into this big cooler and we're gonna start picking through the meat. And this is a big uh, freezer. Well, it's a big refrigerator, but it's very cold inside. You can see here, um, all these containers are full of meat, and we're gonna go through this uh, meat, and we're gonna take what we can, and uh, we're gonna feed it off. You can just see all the different scraps here uh, from the deer, uh, just a lot of meat, and we're just gonna go through it and uh, take what we can, and we're gonna feed it all. This is the glamorous part of the job. And it's cold as hell in here. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite cut through roads heading to uh, the property where the animals are, uh, which is Scott's property. And like I said though, this is just a really scenic route. I also drive this way to see if we see any wildlife, snakes, uh, tortoises, turtles, uh, different type of bird species, but for the most part, it's uh, pretty quiet most of the time, but we do come across something every once in a while. But it just uh, takes you off the beaten path a little bit, off the paved roads, and it's just an enjoyable ride. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna open up this gate. Uh, we're gonna see if the 12 and a half footer big boy uh, is gonna come out to receive some food from us. Like I said, we did get different scraps. We got some deer heads. Just remember guys, uh, viewer discretion advised, it is gonna be a deer head that we're feeding him. Like I said, no parts go to waste. And the processor does uh, the cleaning and processes all the food. And then the scraps I take to feed to these animals, uh, which they will eat deer naturally in the wild. So this is a natural occurrence for wild alligators. Now remember guys, these animals are habituated, which means that they're used to people, they're used to being fed by people. So that's why you're gonna see this, these alligators react differently than what you would see on a normal wild alligator. And these alligators are gonna come, come towards me and I do have to be careful because they're, no, they're not trained in any means. Something can go wrong, uh, we're not planning on it, but um, if it does, my dad's gonna be filming on the phone and I am gonna be filming on the GoPro, which is on my head, uh, trying to get some uh, really cool shots of me actually feeding him. So uh, we're gonna open up the gate and see what happens.
Viewer discretion is advised. All right, well, that was the big alligator done. You saw him crush those heads like it was like a potato chip. Uh, we're gonna lock him down and we're gonna move on to the 11 footer aggro. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and try to feed a couple of the eight, nine footers. Uh, normally this size is a little more um, explosive. So we'll see what happens. Uh, this is Badger. We're not going to feed him a lot just because he did eat um, a whole turkey uh, about a week ago. So we don't want to overfeed him, but we are going to try to give him a little bit of food. All right. So we just got a little piece of meat. We're going to try here. He should come out. I love feeding these guys. It's always exciting. And if you do notice when they do eat the big ones, even the smaller ones, they don't chew their food. They might crush it, but they don't chew it. They swallow their food whole. Uh, they just gotta keep looking at him because he isn't a feeding response right now. But notice too how they're not running away from me. They're actually coming towards me. Um, and that's where the nuisance alligator part comes in. Um, and that's why these alligators are caught and killed. But like I said, that's not what we do, so. We give these animals homes for the rest of their lives, or we end up donating them to another zoo or sanctuary where they'll live out the rest of their lives. But uh, this is Angry Badger, and we're gonna move on to another alligator. All right, so we're gonna go in with this uh, next male alligator, uh, neighbors to Angry Badger. You do notice I do have a PVC pipe. It's just an extension to my arm. If they get a little uh, too close, I use it to push them back a little bit. But, uh, Follow me, guys. We're going to go see if we can feed them.
And what you're looking at there, guys, is a, um, a standoff. You have the alligator that's in the one that we're feeding, and then you have Ghost, who's trying to come in and get his food. So you can see it's a dominance thing here, where the one in here does not want Ghost to come and take the food. All right, so we're gonna feed two more alligators. Uh, we are gonna feed the female that we got. Uh, she has a rescue. Uh, we're trying to get her to eat so she can fatten up a little bit. So we're gonna see if she'll eat a piece of chicken. She ate a little bit yesterday, and then we're gonna try to feed Ghost a piece of chicken. And then this afternoon, we're gonna pick up more meat and feed more tomorrow. But I had a couple extra pieces of chicken from the foxes, so we're just gonna feed it to some of the alligators. So we're gonna use this little piece of chicken and we're gonna feed it to this female. You'll see she's uh, beat up, she's thinned out but hopefully she'll take this chicken. All right, so we threw the chicken in her mouth. Um, we're gonna leave her be. Hopefully she will eat that. Um, but I think she's only gonna do that when we're gone. So we're gonna leave her alone and we're gonna move on to Ghost. And um, I'll just give you an update to see if she ate the food before we left. All right, so this is Ghost. Ghost is a hypomelanistic. Um, I actually got him off of a farmer uh, down in South Florida. And we're gonna see if Ghost will come for this food. Should. Just keep filming her. <laughs> and you can see how food aggressive she actually is. But Ghost is a beautiful alligator. All that white. All right, well you just saw us feed a few of our larger alligators. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we did get some GoPro footage, so we're going to add that into the footage. Uh, like I said, it was a request from somebody, one of our subscribers. So I hope you enjoy that. And guys, I want to thank you all for watching another episode of Into the Wild with Jimmy Ripple.